Hi, I'm Otto, and this is Parrot. Parrot, as you may have noticed, is an experimental audio repeater from Klevian, designed for real-time looping, rhythmic manipulation, and all kinds of stutter and glitching effects. Now, you might be wondering how something like this differs from a typical delay effect. So, a delay takes the audio you feed into it and echoes it back at set intervals, usually with feedback so the echoes repeat and decay over time. Parrot works in a very different way. Instead of echoing the signal, it actually records a fresh slice of audio every time the internal master loop of Parrot cycles. And that slice becomes the material that the built-in sequencer plays back. So with Parrot, the repeats aren't just decaying echoes, they're constantly refresh snapshots which are played back in whichever way you decide. So it's more about rhythm, repetition and movement. You can chop audio into steps, you can pitch it, shift it, glitch it or turn it into evolving textures that stay locked to the group. I realize that might sound a bit complicated if you're new to these type of effects, but it really isn't. And Parrot is only going to be as complicated as you want it to be. So in this video we'll take a look at the main parts of the layout. I'll show you how the controls relate to what you hear and then we'll check out some musical examples as well as go through some workflow tips. So let's jump in. Okay so here we have a really simple project so that you can get a clear idea of how the controls and parameters affect the incoming sound. So first we have this hi-hat that plays on the first beat of every bar in this loop and this is the one we'll be using with Parrot. And only for rhythmical reference, we also have this straight kick drum here. So let's load an instance of Parrot and check it out. I'll try to play the loop as we go so you can actually hear what the different settings do. All right, so at the top here, we have this green master loop section. This is basically the foundation of how Parrot works. Everything here controls how audio is recorded and how often the internal loop resets. And below it we have this blue section with the sequencer, effects, etc. And this is where everything else happens. So let's first quickly go through the controls in the master loop section from left to right. First up here we have a mute and a solo for the real time sound being sampled. Next, the rec control which sets how long the captured sample will be each time the loop runs. And this can be set or typed here or dragged directly in the loop display right here. And here we also have a fade in and fade out for the captured sample. Following this, we have the length and note value, which together define the length of the loop itself. So for example, if I set the length to 16 and the note value to quarter notes, as it is set here, the loop will be four bars long in a typical 4-4 time signature. And next to these, we have the global offset. This shifts the position of the loop start, letting you move the whole pattern ahead or behind the beat. So for example, say I want to sample something that is two beats into the loop we have here, I would need to offset the loop by two beats. But right now we don't have any sound two beats in, so there's nothing for Parrot to sample here. But I'll show you an example of this later on in the video. Okay, so last up top here we have Sync, which determines how Parrot aligns to the host, or DAW. And here we have the options of host timeline, beat, or free. When set to free, Parrot will start the master loop directly, no matter where you start in your host. And if set to beat, the master loop will start at the next beat. And finally, when set to host timeline, the master loop is fully synchronized to your DAW's grid and timeline. So below this is the sequencer, which determines how the captured audio behaves rhythmically. Each step can trigger the captured sample, accent it, and change its pitch. You activate and deactivate steps simply by clicking on them. And the steps value here determines how many steps are in the sequence. You also have a choice to crop the steps so that they will only play for the duration of the set note value here in the sequencer's time tab. And uh, the pitch can also be set to direct or bend. Okay, and here inside the time tab, the main control is the note value, which sets the rhythmic spacing of the steps in the sequencer. And variation settings allow the step length to change between each repetition of the sequence, and here you can also play around with the offset, skip, and direction settings for even more variations on the variations. 
There's also a humanized control right here, which can help make patterns less static and uh, more natural sounding. So next we have the effects tab. Starting with the pan knob, this can be used as any regular pan control, but you also have two different options of uh, auto pan so that it automatically pans on either every step or on only active steps. Next, we have the volume control, which lets you set a volume change over the duration of the sequence. You can also adjust the volume curve. And here we have the pattern filter, which can be set to change between two set frequencies over the duration of the sequence. And here you also have a few different options for this filter. And it can of course also be set as a normal static filter. Over here we also have a dry signal filter that affects only the incoming non-processed audio if you want to shape the two layers separately. And in the yellow box here we have Parrot's master section where you have a dry and a wet control, an output meter and a bypass button. Over here above the Parrot logo we of course have the preset browser where you can check out the many included presets as well as save your own. Lastly, Parrot also includes window resizing and a tooltip option over here. And you also have these lock options to protect your loop settings as well as master output settings when browsing through presets. Alright, so that's a quick overview of the main sections and controls and how they work together. As you can probably tell, Parrot can go pretty deep, and there are, of course, a lot of creative directions you can take, depending on how you combine the master loop, the sequencer, and the effects, etc. So if you want a more detailed breakdown of every control, every mode, and all the smaller options I didn't get into here, the manual is definitely your friend, and it's well worth checking it out if you want to dig in deeper. But we definitely already have the basics covered here, so let's try it out on a few different sounds in a slightly more inspiring context. All right, here we have a little idea that I've been playing around with and where we already have Parrot on a few of the instrument tracks. But I still want to use Parrot to try to expand the soundscape with the timbre of the vocals, so let's do that together in a minute. But first, let's listen to what we have so far and also take a really quick look at what Parrot is doing on some of the instruments. So. Uh, Here's the track. Okay, that's what it sounds like now. So let's quickly solo the instruments that already have Parrot on them, starting with this uh, melodic kick. So, this is what it sounds like before Parrot. And uh, this is with Parrot on it. And also, here it is in the track. Okay, so next we have this synth down here. And this is what it sounds like without Parrot. And with Parrot. And with the track. Alright, so uh, let's check out this other synth as well. So this is without Parrot. And with Parrot on it. And in the track. Okay, so on to the vocals. I've already loaded an instance of Parrot here, so let's start tweaking. So now I'm changing the global offset because I'm trying to catch another note that's actually on the fifth beat from the start of the loop. So I've changed the offset to five. around with the pitch a little bit. Oh, and that bend sounds nice. You gotta get some pan. Make it a little more subtle. 
filter it and have it move a little bit, but I still want to create some distance here. I think that sounds great. Let's uh, let's keep going. Let's try another one. I think that sounds kind of nice and repetitive. to give it a little bit of a different filter so it so it gets its own place in the mix. Looks like I missed activating this step. Let's go crazy and try both together. Okay, that's really cool. I'm definitely keeping both of these on. And uh, let's take a quick listen to the before and after on the vocals. Awesome. Okay, we're almost at the end of the video, but before we wrap things up, I just want to give you a few workflow tips. Number one is that automation with Parrot is extremely fun and effective. Like uh, automating the wet control, for instance, can let you bring it in for only transitions or other certain parts without blurring the mix at all. And automating the variation knob can help you create interesting crescendos and all kinds of fun rhythmical effects, for example. And also, don't forget that you can use the humanize and fade settings to smooth out the edges of the repeats and to give them a more natural feel. And lastly, going through the preset library is a great way to explore what Parrot can do, and it's also a great way to stumble upon those happy accidents. And once you find something you like, you just tweak the master loop or sequencer to fit your track, and you might have yourself a brand new feature element in your production. Who knows? Okay. Hopefully this gave you a good idea of what Parrot is about. It's really a tool that rewards experimentation and it can do anything from subtle rhythmic movement to full on glitch chaos. So if you haven't already, head over to the ClearGram website, download the Parrot demo and try it out on your own music. It's one of those plugins that makes a lot more sense once you start playing with it. And there's really no wrong way to use it. Just experiment and have fun. Okay, so thank you for watching. Links are in the description and I'll see you next time. Bye.